Okay, so listen up. Shh. Can I have it quiet down a little bit, please, now? Shh. Okay, so the very first graph. Uh, it's very important to understand what rate is. Rate is rise over run or, or the, the uh, change over time. We'll notice at this part of the graph, the rate is, of growth is slow. And at this point of the graph, the rate becomes higher. When we talk about rate, we're talking about change over time. So if this is 0 to 1 days or 0 to 1 hours, and uh, I gain 2 units of whatever, uh, you'll notice that the slope of this line represents the rate, whether it's 2 deaths per day or 2 grams of, uh, two grams of sugar per hour or whether it's milliliters of oxygen. Now, if I increase the amount of activity or the amount of whatever we're measuring on the dependent variable over the same unit of time, you'll notice that the slope is much greater. And so line A versus line B has a greater rate of change. And so what you'll notice is, look, at the slope of this line, is it constant or variable? Is it constant or variable? It's variable, meaning it changes, it varies. So when you describe what's happening to the population of bacteria, you can use a lot of things. It grows slowly at first and then rapidly towards the end. The population is growing um, from you know zero to six hundred back or about five hundred bacteria within about a hundred and looks like like I don't know seventy minutes. You can do a lot of things to describe what's going on. Now. This type of growth where there's unlimited resources and it's pretty much unchecked, looks like it'll go on forever. That type of growth is called exponential. Okay. Now, now we're going to talk about pines or trees growing in Minnesota after a glacier goes away. Now, look at what happens here. Look at the slope of this line, then it increases growth here, increases... And then eventually we balance off. What do we call it when the population reaches its kind of maximum level in an ecosystem? Yeah. Oops. Carrying capacity. And so the carrying capacity here I would probably estimate as 400. Okay, so over 110 years, what happens to the growth after 110 years? They're probably saying, what happens from here to here? Right? Looks like that population is growing steady. It's slowing its growth, right? It's, it's maintaining a constant level. So it looks like there's no more growth. The growth has stopped. What factors would affect the carrying capacity? It's all of those limits to population that we talked about in the lecture. There's three dependent, density dependent, right? Density dependent. And we talked about competition. We talked about predation. And we talked about parasites and disease. Right? Those things will kill or uh, populations much greater because they're so dense, it's easier to spread disease. Predators are going to go and eat where there's lots of food. And competition becomes greater when you have to compete amongst more organisms in the same space. Now, density independent, right? Density independent factors. Independent. Uh, which would, you know, stop the growth of pines would be what? What's one density independent? Natural disasters. Right? If there was a forest fire, that would slow the growth of those, for, of those trees. What else? Yes? Unusual weather. If there was a drought or maybe it rained a lot. And what's the last one? Well, global warming is indirectly human activities, correct. So us. That has nothing to do with density, okay? 
Now we're looking at what happened with the Wolves and the Moose on the Isle Royale in, uh, Royale in Canada. Yes. No, that was for three. How is it possible that the White Pine population reached 462 individuals at year 110? Right? What happened? How did it get so high right here? Why did it grow exponentially at first? And then what happened from here to here? Well, these are trees, right? They grew really rapidly, really high. And then all of a sudden, these factors, these density-dependent factors kicked in. And they dropped because there was too much competition for the soil, the water, right? Too much competition for the organisms having to um, pollinate each other. And there was, maybe there was uh, viruses that affect plants or disease that was going through the trees. Maybe there was an increase of predators that were eating all their seeds now. Okay, that's going to cause that to plateau. All those three density-dependent factors probably kicked in right at around 110 years. Not to say that there were some density-independent factors that would maintain that as well. Okay, so let's look at this second-to-last graph. What's going on? What, what was the greatest moose population? Yeah. What year did that occur? 1995 about? What was the wolf population at that time? The wolf population, was it high or low? The wolf population at 1995? Yeah, it was pretty low, which would make sense, right? What was the wolf population when the moose population was its greatest? I don't know, about, it uh, looks like about, I don't know, 15, 16 or so. Uh, remember, this half is for the moose, and this half is for the wolves. So they're at different scales, so please pay attention to that. Yes. You don't have two lines on yours? No. It's very faint because of the way that it printed out. So, Well, let's use this right now. Let's do it right now. You guys can see this, right? That's good to know. Is it very faint? Yeah, I apologize for that. So what do you think happens when the moose population, let's look at the moose, drops? What happens when it drops? What happens to the wolves? Huh? What what happened to the wolves when it drops? Yeah, as moose goes up, you would think wolves will go up, and when moose goes down, guess what happens to the wolves? Crashes because their food source goes down. What do you think would happen if we removed all the moose? What happened to the population of the wolves? Identify a factor from those six factors other than moose population that would influence wolf population in island rollout. Just come up with any other factor that might influence the population of wolves besides their food source, right? Besides competing with food. There are six factors. Can anybody come up with another factor that would affect the population of wolves besides their food source? Disease. Good. Right? Human activity affecting their habitat. There are many other factors besides lack of food. And then lastly, this graph shows the percentage of or, uh, individuals in a population at each uh, age range broken down by males and females. This structure shows what country? What country? Huh? China. Shows China. What would cause the base of this to shrink over time? Less and less young people over time. Yeah. 
people not having more than two children. If these people right here are not replacing themselves by having at least two, two children, then you will see the base of this shrink. And then as these people get older, then the top will start to get wider and we'll have more old people than young people. Is that going to cause the population to grow fast, to slow down, or to get smaller and stop growing? And stop growing. So the policies in places like China, right, that are overcrowded are to hopefully, you know, not have as many kids as uh, or more than to re replace yourself because then it would increase population growth. <laughs> Places like Italy, you have less than two births per individual. So what you see in that case is um, the population slowing down. Okay, so that goes in your binder.